Okay, so I'm here with Annie Costable. She yes. works with us at the Sun Times, and this is a whole new series called Working the Story. Yep. Well, um, as Chicago knows, Loyola is headed to the final four. I think it surprised everyone. But once they got on that role, it really wasn't surprising anyone. Everyone just totally bought in to the hype that is um, the Ramblers. And I've been covering it from um, the local angle. Um, our reporters, Maddie and Steve, have been out on the March Madness Trail, but I've been sticking right here in Chicago covering the students and the campus and the watch parties. How has this Loyola story been going for you? I think it's really interesting because habitually uh, the Chicago media don't really cover Loyola. Uh, for the first 20 games or so, it was just the student journalists in the press conference after, and now, you know, we're all here. You're having to kind of compete with a lot of other outlets, making sure that your mic yeah. is on the stand, making sure that you're getting the shot. How does this work for you? Because you're out here by yourself. I think you just got to um, be a boss about it. I mean, we're journalists. We know what it takes to get a story done. And um, so this is no different, especially in the sports world. I think it just takes that attitude of like, I belong here too. We need to get the story told just as much as everyone else does. And if you come into it with that mentality, then no one can mess with you. I love that there's a game happening on the court, but there's also a game happening before oh, and after. For sure. We got to get over there to cover coach. He's about to come out um, and you'll see everyone will scramble, hit record. Um, it'll be a madhouse here in a second. Okay, now I know that Sister Jean is pretty magical, but maybe you're the magic. I mean, isn't this like the first big story that you've really covered from beginning maybe, to end? Maybe, it might just be me. As soon as the buzzer hits, are you trying to get your story published? Like, what are some tricks? What are some things that we don't know? Throughout the entire game, you're taking notes and you're kind of looking for anecdotes. I usually start writing my game story at like the eight minute mark at, in the second half. It is fun to, to be at these different events, but what people don't see is there's so much that goes into getting the perfect shot, making sure you ask the right question. Um, you know, just the little things that when they see your story, they don't think twice about, but you have to think a hundred times about just to make sure it gets done right. When you're watching a game, what are you looking for? That's maybe not typical. After a, uh, you know, a, a moment like clinching the final four, I'm looking for facial expressions. I'm looking for moments between two friends who are teammates or a, a, you know, a coach and his family in the, as he goes piling in and disappears into a sea of hugs. The nerves are all deadline oriented. We post as soon as the game's over, what we call like a buzzer story. Right at the buzzer, you have to click send and tweet it out and put the alert out. When there's a minute left, every single beat reporter is sitting there just typing away on their computer. So you kind of, if the game's close as Loyola's first three were, you don't know who's gonna win literally until the last possession. You, you kind of have to have two stories going. Oh, easily the best part is the atmosphere. I mean, you're part of history. Being a part of those moments that you see inspire different people from across the city is really, I think, the most special part. Now, if Loyola does win, does that mean you're not gonna come into the Sun-Times office for like another week? I can't go on the record about that. <laughs>